Okay. Hi guys. Good afternoon. So I had worked on my um, December, Lori Marie Jenkins December challenge. Um, and I thought the cover was finished and I have decided I really do not like this cover. Uh, I don't like what's going on with it. Something about it is really not right. So I will probably be working on it some more. I don't know right now what I'm going to do with it to make it the way I want it to look. Um, so we're going to leave it like it is for the moment and step away from it and do some more with the uh, signatures. And I'll come back to it for the moment. It's just going to be like it is. Now, it's, I mean, it's not bad, but I just don't like it. So, um, you know, sometimes that happens. And I have gotten all of my signatures um, gessoed. All the pages are gessoed. They look pretty white in that picture. Um, and you know, there you can see. And then I coated everything with a layer of Mod Podge. I do not like the feel of the gesso by itself, and therefore I coated it with layer Mod Podge. Now, since we, the point of painting over this was if you were going to write in it, that you wanted it, you didn't want all the the writing from the ads and from the maps and things like that showing through so there's always the issue of writing on Mod Podge but uh, it's really not a problem uh, I, I did have to hunt for uh, this is a brand new ink pen that Mindy uh, Mitz Z sent me and because it was brand new I wanted to make sure that old ink pen would work but this is just a standard ballpoint pen and it writes just fine let's see so it writes just fine on there it doesn't rub off it's it's great but I was trying to find believe it or not I have a whole bin of ink pens but do you think I could find an old one that that actually wrote even on the desk top paper but anyways so just a standard ballpoint pen just this one it, this one doesn't want to write either see uh, they won't write on anything so um, just if a pen will write it will write uh, on here now you don't want to use a gel pen or anything like that because it'll smear but a standard really nice ballpoint pen um, actually the cheap ballpoint pens as long as they're new enough to write uh, work just fine on this gesso paper so that's where we stand with that now I did fold up my signatures so that I can get to work on my little pockets and tucks and things like that and all three signatures are similar so I thought I would show you what I did with them so far just because I wanted to have it fit in my cover I don't mind if it sticks out over here and I don't mind if it sticks out at the top but I don't want it sticking out at the bottom so I kind of made all the papers where that they would work like that so this is a piece of matte paper and I folded it up and I'm making a pocket. This is just dictionary paper and it fits in there just fine by itself. This was that big sheet of uh, packing paper. I did have to tear off the bottom a little bit and then I folded this where it has a flip out. This is a sheet of deli paper and what I did with this let me show you is I folded it up and then I trimmed let's see here let's, let me get it back I just folded it up like that then I took here and I trimmed off the folded side a little bit on the part that flips up so that when it's in the signature, I 
you can actually flip it down now I'm not going to do that a pocket I'm going to leave it just like that as a flip this is a sheet of music paper and it, it fit just fine it's a book page and it fit just fine now this is a great big flyer sheet and what I did was I, I mean this is a big sheet let me slide this over a little bit um, let me take those out see I folded that up then when I folded it in half I folded these both back like so now I will turn this into a pocket uh, and and leave it as a pocket this is another sheet of deli paper and this is a, a cardboard um, junk mail piece that it's a advertisement for dentists uh, this was just a sheet of long copy paper that I happened to use to to keep some the black edges when I was making something edging something in black from transferring to everything else and then of course the back side of our signature is like so this is going to be a pocket it's not going to unfold so I have three signatures about like that now I'm not going to sew the signatures in just yet because I have other things I want to do and of course I want to sew on them and they're much easier to sew on if they're loose the first thing is and I'm somehow minus one piece but I have these small these are hymnal sheets it's it's music from out of a hymnal well to make them fit in the signature the way I want I am going to sew them together as two sheets and then fold it and make it a pay uh, a pay, page for the um, signature so I'll have that as an extra piece of paper in the signature when I get down to it and somehow or another I have five and not six I don't know what I was doing or where the other piece went to have no clue so then you know the book I'm using um, I I took out the innards of a this is a textbook it's a textbook on music and so I got into the book and I pulled out some images that I want to use as tuck spots and pockets but I want them stiff enough that they are not um, that they that they're not paper like so rather than using cardstock or something else I've got all of these wonderful book pages that I can um, use as backing and I don't know if I'm going to use two thicknesses or three but I'm going to uh, Mod Podge them together and I'll show you how I'm going to do that I just took out things like the table of contents um, and I'm just going to Mod Podge these together like so. Now when I do that I tend to, to do the whole sheet but I also don't go clear out to the edge. Let me just show you. It's easier to show you than it is to explain it. By not going all the way out to the edge then when I push my pages together there's places for the Mod Podge to go to and I'll go ahead and do this whole sheet even though I'm only going to use the image area because it's they they work real good for other projects so I often keep sheets like this put together
just like so. And then I'll use one of my little plastic cards. And see, it came out. So that's one of the reasons why you want to have plenty of edge around there so that it doesn't get all over everything. And make sure you keep your card clean and dry so that it doesn't get on your page. Now I'm going to go ahead and do all that. I'm not going to make you sit here and watch that. Um, and like I said, I may decide to add a third layer of book page to this, but I have tons of book pages from this book that really don't have a lot of other use and they're beautiful color and so that's what I'm going to be doing. So I'm going to get this done, I'm going to let them get dry and I'll be back to show you my next step. Hi guys, um, I'm back and working on this still. Uh, it is not going to get done by the end of December, but that's all right. It might have been a December challenge, but I'm okay with that. Um, I have my signatures sort of put together. I have done some folding um, to make them fit. And uh, I want to show you what's next. This because I, I have a lot of sewing to do. So first off, I want to show you what, I'm, what I've done. The book that I'm using, the cover, was a... Um, oh my goodness. It was a class book for uh, either a high school or college music class. So... A course book. In it were these pages that had these nice fun little pieces and so what I did was I used my fancy dancy tearing tool and I tore some of these pieces out with a little room around them. Like so. So that I have these little strips of music that I can use as sort of a decoration in my book. Uh, I'll show you those where I've put them in just a minute. And then I had taken these pages and I did end up putting three pages together. So I have uh, you know, just parts of the book pages that were not used for for other things. I, uh, I glued them together with Mod Podge and so I have all these pictures from the same book that I'm going to use as my decorations in the book. And what I did with these was I just simply trimmed them up And I did save these bigger pieces because I may use them for charms and things like that. Some of the smaller pieces I did get rid of. And once I trimmed these, I took my corner rounder and I rounded off the corners. These are going to be pockets and tuck spots in the book. I want to sew around them first, but for right now, uh, I'm going to sew them and then glue them in because I want to sew all the way around them. So those are just ready to be worked on. And then I actually got on the internet and printed out some pages of quotes about music. Um, there, there was all kinds of different 
people and, and all kinds of different quotes about music. Um, and I just printed them on some coffee dyed paper. As long as you hand feed the paper through in my printer, it went through just fine. It did wrinkle some of it a little bit, but that's because the coffee dyed um, paper is, is a little softer. It was not a big dirt worry to me. And I don't, I want to go ahead and use them, even though they're wrinkly. That's just part of the age. And with these, I again just tore them apart or tore apart some of them, not all of them, like so, so that I have some little quotes to use in my book as decoration. And I made, I'm not necessarily finished decorating the book. I, I'm just going to show you what I have put in so, f or want to put in so far. Um, I have a feeling that as, as I work on the book, I'm going to want to add more. So for right now, I'll just show you what I'm gluing in. And whenever I sew on something, I like to have the pieces stuck down. So I have um, saved my pieces out to, to stick down. And uh, I'm just using a glue stick. You want to make sure whatever you use dries before you try to sew it. So I'm just using a glue stick. And they don't have to be stuck down permanent, permanent. Where I am going to sew around them, but if you just sew around them, sometimes they want to move on you. So I'm just, oops, that was a lot of glue came out. Like so. And here's a place where I used one of the music notes and what I'm doing with this one is sort of just dividing the page and like I said I haven't totally finished everything that I'm doing with this yet. Um, another thing I did was on, let's set this aside, on these pocket pages where I had folded the pockets, I'm not exactly happy with, I wasn't happy I should say, with how they were kind of the same and I decided that by adding a little bit of a border kind of thing I would end up with a page I liked so and this is just about tacking it a little bit to make sure that it stays in place but I'm gonna sew those and I'm gonna sew up the sides for the pockets but I I'm not gonna do that or or glue the sides of the pockets until I'm sure I'm done decorating but that's that page. Let's put this back together. Now these are all put in here temporarily. They may get changed around a little bit. The big thing is is that um, you want to leave them loose until, don't sew them in your book until you're done if you're going to sew on them because you cannot easily sew things when it's stuck, when it's sewed into a cover. I also am not real happy with my covers, so I'll probably be working on that some too. And this little flip just flips down. Get 
there's another one I want to put in. Now I won't want to sew on this right away because I will want it to um, get itself, make sure that those are dry. I do want to show you, I, I miss showing you this, I did um, make another little edge for my pocket here. I Like I said, I just wasn't real pleased with uh, how the pocket edges looked. I thought that they needed something. so. I just edged them with some more paper that is not, I think the, the gesso kind of dulled them down so much that they just didn't look like much to me. So that's what I've done so far. And next we'll go over to the sewing machine and I will show you what I'm going to do with all of the different parts and pieces as far as sewing them, at least for the beginning. I have not totally made up my mind what I'm gonna do with everything. So, you know. It, it works, it's a little bit at a time. You kind of work through it. So, see you over there on the sewing machine. Bye-bye. Good afternoon, everybody. Uh, I don't know how great the light's gonna be over here, but we're gonna try it out anyways. I'm not gonna make you watch all of the sewing, but I wanted to give you some ideas and some tips and things. Um, these are new needles and I've been using this one. Uh, they are for super sticky stuff. And I, since I were sewing on paint and we're sewing through uh, Mod Podge and things like that, um, I felt that the super sticky stuff would be a good idea. Now these are size 80 or 12. I, to get the package open I had to get rid of the little paper. So. These are size 90 14s, and I am using a 14. Um, uh, you don't want a huge needle because the size of the needle is going to rip your paper, but if you're sewing through uh, any kind of cardstock or, or several thicknesses of paper, you want to consider the thickness of the needle, but you also have to stick with something that's going to carry your thread properly. Um, I probably for everything I've been doing probably an 80 would have worked but the 90 is just that little bit 90 14 is just that little bit bigger uh, use thread your sewing machine up just like you would normally the one thing I can tell you about sewing on paper is that you really 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 need to clean your machine when you're done uh, that's that's of utmost um, importance the Acids that are in paper, the fact that we're sewing on plastic, that kind of thing is very important that, that we want to make sure that we get uh, the machine cleaned and oiled, that kind of thing. I am using just a plain straight stitch. I, I like that. That makes me happy. And I leave all my tails. You notice I have two different colors of thread. They, that is one of the things that if you're doing this and you are you want to use two different kinds of thread, be aware that the, the thread, top and bottom, should match if you want matching stitching. If you want t proper tension, uh, having two different threads can cause different tensions. And you shouldn't mess with your tension. You should uh, use regular thread. Now, I don't care on paper. It doesn't bother me. And I am sort of using up threads. But not only that, I wanted this to be junky. So having two different colors even made, it, made me happier about it. When you're using a stitch on paper, 
there is something to consider in that the length of your stitch, if you get your stitch length too short or your stitches too tight together, you will tear your paper. Now on this particular piece, this is because I want to sew this these two pages together because they, they weren't big enough to use by themselves. So I'm overlapping them about an inch. That way when I fold it, it will actually be um, stitched into the signature down the middle of these two pieces of paper. The other thing about lengthening your stitch a little bit, and, and my stitch length goes from zero to five, and I have it on three. Uh, it depends on your machine, what the numbers are, but I kind of have mine in the middle length. You don't want it too long and you definitely don't want it too short. Now this piece I'm just going to fold in half. Let me see if I can show it to you. Um, and now my stitch, give me just one second, let me fold this and then I'll show it to you because it'll be easier. And now my stitches are on both sides of where it's folded. Uh, sewing on paper, I would not sew something together with on paper and expect it to actually stay together. Sewing on paper can create a a weak spot where the paper will tear. Um, just because it's stitched together does not mean it is has a permanent um, bond. These are my pockets that I used um, and that I'm going to use and I'm going to just glue them in place because I want the stitching line to go all the way around. So I'm just going to start and stitch it. Oh, I just broke my thread. Now that can happen when you get going too fast, and that's that's all right. Um, I shouldn't have been going quite so fast. Notice that I threaded my machine with the presser foot up. Never thread your machine with the presser foot down. Never. The presser foot causes your tension assemblies on the top to close. When you try to thread your machine with the presser foot lever down, your tension assemblies in the top are closed and therefore your machine does not thread properly. <laughs> this is going to be one of those mixed media comedy tapes. I just ran out of bobbin thread and that's probably why the top thread broke earlier. So, yep, she's empty. So, let's see what we got over here. The videotape of errors. This little pocket of um, Bach is going to have some fun um, tails all over the all over its little pocket. Now you have to remember that every time you punch a hole through this paper that you are actually making a hole where the paper can tear. 
That's one of the reasons why I am gluing my pockets on. I do not trust sewing the pockets on. I am afraid that over time it will not take a whole lot and um, the, the paper will tear along that line. I love sewing on paper. I've done it a lot over the years. It does not hurt your sewing machine as long as you clean your sewing machine when you're done. And I'm going around this little piece twice. I thought that was fun to have all those little stitch lines around them. I also do not reverse. We're just sewing this for the fun and the junkiness of sewing it. We're not sewing it for strength and durability, so that's just fine. Now, uh, I wanted to show you on some of the pages. And one of the reasons that we don't sew our book in our pages, our signatures into our book until after we've done our sewing is because it's a whole lot easier to sew on this little page prior to sewing it into your book. See, it now, right now I can take out one page, I can lay it flat, and I can sew around this. This is where I added some of those um, different quotes. Always when you turn a corner, make sure your needle is down in your fabric or in your paper or fabric or whatever you're sewing. Um, you don't want to turn a corner with the needle up in the air. That causes your, your stitch not to be complete. When the needle is down or completely up, the stitches are complete. That's another thing, is when you go to pull your thread out, after you have stitched something, make sure your needle is all the way in the up position. Turned that the wrong direction. Now, like I said, I'm just stitching these for the the decoration of them. They were glued to the tape to the piece of paper. Now you can see where I have stitched around that. And then I can just lay it back in my signature the way I want it to look. And I can pull out the next piece that I want to sew on and open it all up flat. to sew on it. So even if it's a pretty big sheet, you can still work on it as long as it's flat and not sewn into your book. You start sewing things into your book, you aren't going to be able to get to them to uh, To sew on them. Sorry. Now I have. I am definitely sure that this is not. This book's not going to get finished in December, like for the December challenge. I. That's okay with me. I'm not going to argue with it. I'm not going to fight with it. And that's. You know. That's just the way it is. I had too many other things going on this last month. So, 
Um, I am going to upload this video at this point and uh, I'm going to try to finish up in the next week or so. Um, there's, you know, just a lot going on. So anyways, guys, I hope you had fun and I hope you're having fun. Maybe you're making a, a junk journal too. So talk to y'all later. Bye-bye. Oh, I guess we need a quote, don't we? Well, and I forgot to bring my quote book over here. Can you hold on just a minute and I'll be right back. Sorry about that, guys. <laughs> I forgot I had come over here and wanted to finish this. This is our quote for today from 1001 Ways to Creativity. This one says, Creativity is what happens when you break free from habit. And I hope you all are having fun. Go make some art. Bye-bye.